with income tax threshold frozen until 2028, I wanted to take a look at the true tax that us employees here in the UK pay. Now, whether you're an employee of a company or whether you're a company director, I've got you both covered. And I think it's gonna surprise a lot of people how much tax they actually pay. Now, I know most of you will be familiar with the standard tax rates of 20%, 40%, 45%, but we also have national insurance and there are a couple of other taxes as well that you guys need to be aware of. So let's take a look at this as I'm sure you guys are aware there is apparently a productivity issue here in the UK and when you see that some of these taxes are in excess of 60%, I think that might go a small way to explaining that. So let's start with employees first and go through these one by one. So the first row, 0 to £12,570, that is your tax-free personal allowance. So on that, you don't pay any income tax and you don't pay any national insurance. Now up to last year, the national insurance threshold was actually lower than that, but going forward, they are in parity, so you will not be paying any income tax or national insurance below £12,570. Now this is where things start to get a bit more interesting. So at this point, income tax kicks in. So at £12,571, you start to pay income tax and you also start to pay national insurance. Now just to clear this up, this doesn't mean you start to pay 20% on all of your income. You only start to pay that percent, that 20% and that 13.25% on the income above these thresholds. And that's how it works going all the way through these thresholds that we're gonna to cover today. So at £12,571, you start paying 20% income tax 13.25% national insurance, so a combined rate of 33.25% on any income you generate over £12,570. After that, we get into higher rate territory, which gives us slightly different tax rates. We have 40% income tax, but national insurance drops down to 3.25%. So national insurance comes down 10%, but income tax goes up 20%, which gives you a combined rate of 43 0.25%. And I'm sure most of you guys are following this so far, but this next one throws a lot of people off. So when you get to 100,000, I've got income tax at 60%. Now there's no such thing as a 60% income tax threshold. So what am I talking about? Well, for every one pound you earn over 100,000 pound, you lose, sorry, for every two pound you earn over 100,000 pound, you'd lose one pound of your personal allowance. So your personal allowance is 12,570 pound, so you don't pay 20% income tax on it. But as you earn, for every two pound you earn over 100,000, you lose one pound of this personal allowance. So by the time you get to 125,000 or 125,140 pound, I think is the exact figure, you lose all of your personal allowance. So you're paying a full 20% on this, so effectively, this 25,000 pound here, you're paying 60% income tax on plus 3.25% national insurance, giving you a combined tax rate of this of 63.25%. And also at this point, as you're earning over 100,000 pound, even if you're only an employee, you still have to register for self-assessment. It becomes compulsory at 100,000 pounds. So it's always something to keep in mind. Now this next threshold, this basically won't exist from April 2023, as they're gonna be reducing the additional rate from 150,000 pound down to 125,000 pound. But for now, between 125,000 and 150, you're gonna pay 40% income tax. So when you combine that with national insurance, it's 43.25. So basically the same as what you were paying between 50,000 and 100,000. And at the moment, anything above 150,000 puts you into the additional rate at 45%. But like I say, from April next year, this section here basically disappears as the additional rate will be starting at 125,000 pound. So those are the tax rates for employees. Now, this doesn't actually take into account one other thing, which isn't really a tax, but everyone has to pay, and that is your 5% pension contribution. So I think from April this year, you have to pay 5% of your income as a pension contribution. So it may not be a tax, but it's still 5% of your income. And if you add 5% to all of these figures, 38, 48, 68, 53%, that's a lot of your money that isn't coming to you every single month that's either going to taxes or going into pension for you to pay tax on at a later date, of course. So the other thing to keep in mind is this doesn't cover self-employed people. So self-employed people will fall into the same income tax brackets, but they'll be paying the national insurance slightly differently. Their national insurance is at a slightly lower threshold. Basically, they don't, they don't get sick pay. 
um, or any holiday pay, so they pay a little bit less on the national insurance side. They play, uh, they pay class two and class four national insurance based on the profits they make. So if you are self-employed, use the income tax figures and then check out what the actual class two or class four contributions will be and do your own combined stats for those. Now, company directors, I wanted to do a section for these guys. So I know that many of you have found my channel through the videos that I release every year showing you the best salary to pay yourself as a director of a limited company. So I wanted to do this section especially for you guys to show you exactly how much tax you pay at the different tiers. So up first, our tax-free threshold is only up to £9,100, so over £3,000 less than employees. Now, why is that? Well, that is because the national insurance secondary threshold, so the primary threshold here is for employees, whereas the secondary threshold here is for employers. So even though as an employee of your limited company, you wouldn't be paying any personal national insurance because the threshold is higher, it's at £12,570, you would start to pay employer's national insurance. So that's why this secondary threshold is so important and that is why most basic director salaries only go up to whatever that threshold is. So for this tax year, it's around 9,100, which for me, I'm currently paying myself 758 pound per month. Now I am aware there are other methods you can use to pay yourself as a director of a limited company and some of them may be slightly more tax efficient than this depending on your setup. What I'm giving you here is just the most basic example, the most hassle-free way of doing things. So I'm aware of those other ones so people feel free to discuss them in the comments but for this video I'm just focusing on a basic example of paying yourself a core salary and then topping it up with dividends. So once we get past this 9,100 threshold we don't actually have a dividend tax yet, which I'm going to explain, but we start to pay corporation tax. So dividend tax kicks in once you've used up all of your personal allowance and the £2,000 dividend allowance on top, which is going to be reduced in the coming years to £1,000 and then £500. So effectively, you can pay yourself £12,570 plus £2,000 of dividends before you should start paying dividend tax. Now what's actually happening is most of us are paying ourselves about 9,100 using standard income as an employee because that money is offset against the corporation tax and then we pay the rest as dividends. So as we've got unused personal allowance, we can pay from 9,100 to 12,570 and there's no dividend tax to pay because we're just using up the rest of that unused personal allowance. But because dividends can only be pulled from profits that the company make, we must have paid 19% corporation tax on those profits first. So your tax rate at this point is 19%. Now moving on to the next threshold. So from here, we stay at zero dividend tax because like I said, we've got 2,000 pound of dividend tax allowance. There's no tax to pay on that. So from 12,570 plus that 2,000, which takes up to 14,570, there's still no dividend tax, but there is the corporation tax. So that uses up the rest of your dividend allowance. So your dividend basic rate threshold kicks in at £14,571. So instead of paying 20% basic rate like you would as an employee, you pay 8.75% as a dividend tax. Now that sounds unfair, unfairly low, but remember you are paying this corporation tax as well. So your actual combined rate is 27.75%. And then above the £50,000, we go up to a 33.75% dividend tax plus the corporation tax, which puts us at 52.75%. And unfortunately, we don't get to escape the tax trap either. So effectively, by losing our personal allowance, we end up paying 8.75%. 5% on the stuff that we were paying 0% on. So our actual overall tax is 8.75 plus 33.75, which brings us to 42.5. Add to corporation tax and you're paying a tax rate of 61.5% combined, which is pretty comparable to what employees are paying at that 63% mark that we discussed earlier. Now, next up, we have the tier that will be disappearing as of April next year. And that is the higher rate dividend tax. So 33.75, which is the same as we were paying from 50 to 100,000, plus the corporation tax is 52.75. Then finally, the additional rate, which takes us all the way up to 58.35%, as that is the additional rate for dividend tax plus your corporation tax. So you can see here in the UK, we are paying a good amount of our income in taxes. Now, whether it's called income tax, national insurance, dividend tax, or corporation tax, it's still tax on the income that we are generating. So if they're wondering why there is a productivity issue here in the UK, when you look at these tax levels, you can see why some people struggle to be incentivized to work hard for their employers. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you scroll down and hit the like button. If you wanna see more from me, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna see that video I was talking about where I show you the very best salary to pay yourself as a director of a limited company, I'll pop that in front of me now and I'll see you guys over there.